I'm Derek Cullinger. I have a PhD in physics and I'm going to explain a little bit about how you go about solving a quadratic equation. So quadratic equation for starters, what does that mean? Well, it's really anything that looks like this. A number times x squared plus another number times x plus another number and all of that equals zero. So any equation that you can write in this form, that's a quadratic equation. And so sometimes you're given an equation like this and, and you're told, okay, what can x be? You know, if you plug in x there and there, what does it have to be in order to get this whole thing to equal zero? So, and usually you have actual numbers for a, b, and c. Like, for example, suppose we had 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals zero, and we wanted to figure that out. Well, the cool thing is, you can actually figure this out using a method called completing the squares, but we won't go into that. The result of that is that it turns out that the solution is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Looks like my marker's having some trouble there. Okay, yeah. So anyway, all you have to do, and it's really pretty simple, is you have to figure out what your a, your b, and your c are, and then plug them into this. So in this case, a would be 5, b would be 3, and c would be negative 2. And it is important to include the sign that's in front of the number, so the whole negative 2 would be the c. So what we'd end up with here is uh, negative b, so that would be negative 3, plus or minus the square root of uh, 3 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 2, and then we would divide that whole thing by 2 times a, which is 5. So simplifying that out a little bit, we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus, let's see, that would be 40, all divided by 10. So taking that a step further, we have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 divided by 10. And you notice that that square root of 49, that's the same as 7. So let's just erase that and put a 7 there instead. And you notice that plus and minus, that means that there's really two answers. Two different x values could make this equal 0. And so we, we actually have two answers, and let's write them, write them both. So one of them would be negative 3 plus 7, so that would be 4 divided by 10, or in other words, 2 fifths. And then the other one would be negative 3 minus 7, which would be negative 10 divided by 10. So that would be negative 1. So there you have the two values that x could equal in order to make this quadratic equation equal 0.